So we're here to talk about semiconductors. I'm basically here to introduce our keynote speaker, but let me say a few words first. So I'm Mark Lundstrom. I'm the interim dean of engineering, and I'm someone who's worked in semiconductors since my first job out of college. And I can tell you that there has never been a more exciting or important time in the history of this technology than right now. And there's never been more opportunities for young people like you than right now. So these are, these are really exciting times for us. Um, now, many of you are probably wondering what this is all about, I suspect. Um, now, I'm not sure why so many people signed up, but we're delighted. Where everyone is hearing about semiconductors these days and chip shortages and things about that. Uh, you know, chips, or what we, we call integrated circuits, or ICs, make the modern world possible. You know, a device, when I was your age, I never would have thought a device like this could be possible in my lifetime, or ever. Uh, you know, chips make this possible, and, and much more. So everything, they're in everything from toothbrushes to tractors. They make artificial intelligence possible. They make intelligent autonomous systems work. They are the basis of precision agriculture, industry 4.0. Just about everything we take for granted in the modern world is powered by chips. Increasingly, they're the differentiating factor in products. Uh, that's why Apple now designs its own chips. Uh, and many more companies are doing that as well. Every automobile manufacturer has now announced that they'll be designing their own chips. Because more and more, this is what differentiates one product from another. Now, there are many different kinds of companies involved. It's an incredibly broad field. Uh, there are companies that design chips. There are companies that manufacture chips. There are companies that do both. There are companies that create the sophisticated tools used to manufacture chips. And as well as companies we, don't, we didn't used to think of as semiconductor companies. Companies like Apple, Google, Facebook, Tesla, and many, many more. So chips are actually the most sophisticated things that human beings make. They're incredibly complicated and it takes engineers with a broad set of skills. We recently surveyed a set of semiconductor companies and we asked for their data on new college hires to see if we could understand you know, the, the types of expertise and degrees that they were looking for. And what we found is that it's incredibly broad. They hire chemical engineers and materials engineers and mechanical engineers and electrical engineers and computer engineers and industrial engineers. They even hire aero and astronautical engineers. They hire physicists, they hire chemists, they hire data scientists. I mean, whatever STEM field you are in, and we'd like to encourage you to explore the opportunities in semiconductors. There are a variety of exciting career possibilities for you. So uh, with that, I'm going to introduce our speaker. And we're going to, I mean, we're really fortunate to have with us this evening Tom Sonderman. And Tom is CEO of a company called Skywater Technology. Uh, some of you may have heard that Skywater Technology, but chip manufacturing company has announced its plans to build a facility just west of campus. And th this is going to be an incredible thing. T it'll create many jobs for the areas. It will also create opportunities for students. And Tom may say a word or two about what those opportunities might be. Uh, Tom is a Midwesterner. Uh, he did his BS in chemical engineering at the Missouri University of Science and Technology. And I'm sorry, that was his BS. His MS was in electrical engineering from the National Technological University. He's had a lot of experience in semiconductors, you know, including companies like Global Foundries and AMD. And I think he's got a really good understanding of where the field is today, where it's going, what the opportunities are going to be for young people like you. So please join me in welcoming Tom Sonderman. So how's everybody doing? Wow, this is quite impressive. So everybody knows what a semiconductor is that's here, I assume? All right, raise your hand if you know what a semiconductor is. All right, well, after today, you'll know a little bit more. And then, of course, if I do my job right, you'll all be so excited that you'll all want to get your semiconductor uh, degree. So, um, you know, semiconductors are everywhere. As 
Mark alluded to, if it has an on and off switch, it has a semiconductor. And I remember being uh, back, I won't say how many years ago, that I was sitting where you were. Um, and I was actually getting a chemistry degree, working for a company called Monsanto. Who's ever heard of Monsanto? Monsanto? Yeah, they're th kind of an evil company now, but back in the day they were a chemical company. But they actually made the silicon wafers uh, that is the starting material for, for semiconductors. And so um, I, I was doing an internship and I got exposed to um, you know, semiconductor manufacturing and I thought, oh, this, is, this is pretty exciting and I never looked back. So the one thing about our industry, it's highly addictive. <laughs> and, uh, and the reason is because it's constant change. And you know, when you look at the world we're in now, obviously uh, COVID really shined the spotlight on why semiconductors are important because you never know something's important until you can't get it anymore. And that's kind of what happened with COVID. All of a sudden people couldn't make cars anymore. You know, tractors couldn't be run because uh, there was no computer chip um, to, to deal with the, the GPS system. Believe it or not, tractors have GPS systems. So uh, there's, there's a lot of energy in the conversation today in the country about uh, semiconductors, uh, but a lot of it has to do with foundations that have been laid uh, over many decades. And a lot of what um, got people to pay attention was everybody said, well, where are all these semiconductors made? And everybody said, well, they're not made here. <laughs> they're made in Asia. So let's go to the next slide real quick. Uh, so if you look at the, the supply chain, it's very complicated. And Mark kind of hit on this. Uh, there's everything from the equipment that we use. You know, if you go to the Burke uh, Nanotechnology Center, you go in there, uh, there's all kinds of equipment. All, all that equipment predominantly is made here in the US. Uh, the design automation tools to build integrated circuits are made here in the US. But as you go down towards the manufacturing side, all that manufacturing know-how is kind of shifted to Asia. Uh, and that's really created some of the challenges that we have. If you look at what we do, we do processing, semiconductor, you know, wafer fabrication, and we do the packaging. Uh, but again, there's a lot of stuff on the front end and back end that happens elsewhere. And so that really was kind of what caused the conversation. Let's go to the next slide. Um, to, to occur over the last couple of years was we started looking at where is all the semiconductors made. And when I came into the industry at AMD, we had our own fabs, we designed our own chips, we did our own development, we did everything. We were called an integrated device manufacturer. And then what happened really over the last 15 years is all that manufacturing uh, went overseas, primarily Taiwan and China and Korea. And so all of a sudden people realized that we're innovating, we're developing the tools, we're developing the design software, but we're not really building things here anymore. And that really um, kind of you know, became something that people started paying attention to, specifically coming from the DOD, you know, we don't, um, you know, take defense lightly. And when you start looking at having computer chips that run our defense systems being made outside the U.S., and then you proliferate that uh, to our, you know, daily lives, it became something that, that we needed to uh, kind of Correct, and that's really what's happened here recently with the passage of the CHIPS bill. The reason Secretary Raimondo, Secretary Blinken are showing up is because people are paying attention, um, you know, to uh, semiconductors. And, you know, great, co great countries make things. Um, the one thing about manufacturing, and I'm a manufacturing guy, so, you know, there's chip designers, there's manufacturing. Uh, when you're doing manufacturing, you're making things, you're seeing real live results day to day. And uh, it's just a, it's a great, you know, it's a great capability that you can never lose sight of. And I think in the U.S., certainly in semiconductors, we kind of lost sight of that. Okay. I could click too, by the way. You don't have to stand here. It's all right. Don't have to put a pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> one of the things uh, that's really driven our industry is what's called Moore's Law. And Moore's Law is nothing more than a kind of formulaic way of describing the pace of innovation that we've all benefited from. So back uh, in the, we'll call it mid 90s, uh, we used to talk about a 40 megahertz microprocessor at AMD. And we were so excited that we made a 40 megahertz. 
and then we made it one gigahertz and then all of a sudden it got up to like four gigahertz and all this was based on Moore's law which really was just making the circuitry smaller making the wafers bigger and pump you know basically pumping more functionality into a small piece of silicon uh, that could do more and more and like Mark said who would have thought that you would take a phone that's basically a mini computer right that exists that we all have that frankly probably none of us could live our lives without right uh, I have a 18 year old and I know if I want to get his attention I take his phone away and I don't even have to take it away I can just kind of disconnect it from the network so anyway uh, the industry has really been paced by Moore's law and we're now at a point where we're moving into kind of what's called the fourth wave of computation initially it was mainframes so big rooms full of computers and then we went to PCs and then we went to smartphones and now we have this great computational infrastructure and it's all about connecting things to it so if you look at a lot of the applications on your phone it's taking some piece of data sending it to the cloud giving you some kind of information that you can then make decisions on and so what's become the problem is the cost to do that so um, when you look at the cost of a brand new fab, Intel just announced one in Ohio, it's $20 billion to build one fab. And the building doesn't cost that much. The clean room, $600 million, but it's all the equipment that you have to put in. And an EUV tool, which is extreme ultraviolet, uh, they can cost $100 million plus. So that's like the cost of an Airbus and you have to put 20 of those in the fab uh, becomes very expensive so what's happened is we've pushed more and more functionality the cost has exploded it becomes very very challenging for the average company uh, to take advantage of that technology and so as is typical you know we've gotten and we like to say this in the fab world we've done our job we made things smaller and smaller uh, but the cost of uh, the designs to put those products to market has exploded to where now there's literally only a handful of companies who can actually bring new technologies to market. So Apple designs their own chips, AMD, they can afford these very advanced no technologies, but a lot of other companies, frankly, just can't do it. And so as a result, they're not able uh, to innovate. <clears throat> so the industry is really at an inflection point now to where uh, the, the amount of use of semiconductors continues to grow but the um, ability to capture you know the cost and do it in an economical way uh, is just out of reach for many companies so the uh, the reality is that um, we have to recommit to innovation that's where the chips bill came into play so it's really a 270 billion dollar investment in uh, made in America, making technologies uh, here, uh, not only at the ideation level, but all the way through the manufacturing level. And that's why Purdue is so exciting to Skywater is because we not only have a you know, dedicated you know, uh, university creating people passionate about semiconductor manufacturing, but we're also uh, tying into the whole innovation capability that you have here. And of course, our job at Skywater, as I'll explain, is to, to manufacture those products. So uh, the challenges are many. Uh, the ability to bring in new materials, bring in uh, the complicated nature of a lot of the way that these integrated circuits come together, things we call heterogeneous integration, advanced packaging. Uh, these all are requiring fresh thinking and frankly, a lot of innovation. And that innovation begins at universities, but it has to go somewhere. And so a lot of the, the challenges that you see today is the investment in our industry is going towards the advanced node, again, 20 billion for one fab, and the rest of the industry is kind of starved. And so what we're doing and what Skywater is very passionate about is how do we allow the rest of the industry to kind of take advantage of the innovation uh, that is occurring and how do we create again a mechanism to bring that innovation back here to the US so Skywater um, is and it was great to hear uh, uh, Mitch Daniel your president say it today uh, we are the only 100% US investor owned semiconductor manufacturing company pure play semiconductor manufacturing company 
uh, in the U.S. So that in itself is hard to believe, but, but true. And we came into existence uh, back in 2017, and we have uh, you know, been on a trajectory, uh, very close relationship with the DOD, strong partnership, and where we sit today is, of course, uh, bringing an entirely new model to uh, the semiconductor manufacturing space. So we call it technology as a service. It's all about doing innovation in a high volume manufacturing facility so you can decrease the amount of time it takes from ideation to commercialization. And uh, it's kind of a, a bold move to do high volume manufacturing uh, and R&D in the same place, um, but that's what we do. And uh, we do it. We do it very well, and we're learning to do it better every day. The, uh, the idea of having, you know, maybe just a little context. So R&D is typically done in a pilot line. Like, again, Burke Nano uh, Center is a, a basically a place where you do prototyping, and then you would move the volume production to another facility. What we did was put all that inside one fab. So you're innovating in the same fab that you're going to drive volume manufacturing. And that uh, provides a huge advantage if you want to get to market quickly. So if you look at the funnel, as we call it, all the good stuff happens on the left, right? <laughs> that's, where, that's where all the innovation, all the um, kind of concept and feasibility turning into, hey, I got a great prototype. Can I now make this in volume? And what we've done is, again, turn this into a model where it becomes very, um, kind of methodical for how you take an idea and move it through this funnel so that ultimately you get to high volume manufacturing and you can do it without ever having to you know, leave uh, the fab <coughs> that gets you to market faster and it allows you to co-optimize the product and the process at the same time. That's something that doesn't really happen with the fabless foundry model that we talk about where you uh, have to essentially differentiate by design alone. We allow people to co-optimize together and it's a uh, real advantage when done correctly. So where do our chips go? What's the answer? Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> That's right. And, and it's kind of, you know, when this chart got put together, it, it kind of overwhelmed me and I, I'm supposed to know what goes on in my company, right? <laughs> but when you think about it, everything from strategic defense systems, so making stuff that goes boom, stuff that goes in space, um, to just things that I'll show in a video uh, that affect our everyday life, things that tie to our health, uh, things that, that just, um, you know, are transformational in terms of their ability to make our lives better. And that's, that's really what semiconductor is all about. Uh, they're not only about making our phones uh, work, but you know, think of the things that can happen now because you have a phone. You know, you get stranded in the middle of nowhere. You can actually call someone. I remember being your age, getting a flat tire in the middle of nowhere, and I just walked <laughs> for <laughs> miles and miles. Now you pick up the phone and say, "Come pick me up." So um, you know, semiconductors go everywhere. We have a lot of platforms that allow us to move semiconductors uh, into different places. But you know, the the idea is, you know we get exposed to a lot of different technologies and those technologies uh, ultimately end up affecting our lives. And that's really cool. <clears throat> so today we made an announcement, actually I should say the Department of Commerce did through NIST with our partnership with Google, but this is an example of synergistic innovation. We created an open source platform, which maybe doesn't mean a lot uh, in this room, uh, but proprietary um, IP, is critical to our industry. And so what Skywater did was partner with Google and created an open source version of that IP. And we were able to take that to market uh, in a kind of differentiated way, make it easy for people to do chip design. And you can see 2020 to 22, um, from 45 to over a thousand unique designs were now beyond this uh, as, we, as this year has unfolded. And what this is allowing is a lot of innovators at the university level, at the lab level, to get silicon, get results back, and just accelerate again the cycles of learning. The other thing is that 60% of the people doing these chip designs are first-time designers, and a lot of them are software engineers. 
So now you have software developers who want to make a, an app for the iPhone, and it's going to involve a sensor. Well, they go develop that sensor themselves as opposed to having someone else do it. It's kind of a scary world for all the chip designers out there, but uh, you know, that's not, that's not my problem. <laughs> so this is an example of one of our customers. <laughs> Manufacturing and Process Technology at Rockley Photonics. Rockley wafers processed by Skywater turn into wearables packaged into wristbands and armbands, stuff like that looks like this. They're used continuously to track a wide range of biomarkers such as core body temperature, hydration level, blood pressure, alcohol, glucose, and lactate. The beauty is that all these measurements are done non-invasively without even a pinprick or other uncomfortable procedures. The data is uploaded to your phone and processed in the cloud, providing kind of an artificial intelligence guardian angel to help alert a person to changes in their health and potentially give us early detection of disease. So Rockley has been working with Skywater for over three years now. In that time, we have found Skywater to be a very supportive partner. We've been impressed by uh, how hard the engineering team has worked to bring creative solutions to Rock uh, Rockley's unique needs for uh, a photonics platform. Recently, our focus has now turned on designing products on this photonics process flow. So initially, Skywater was responsible for just a couple of mass steps uh, for our sensor products. We are now on a path to do complete wafer processing with Skywater, leveraging both the Minnesota and the Florida plant sites. Um, this increased level of engagement with Skywater uh, is due to very close alignment of the two management teams and it filters down to every single person that I have the pleasure of interacting with at Skywater. Rocky appreciates the close collaboration with the Skywater engineering team who has worked hard to transfer this technology into the fabs. Going forward, our success will be determined by a handoff to the manufacturing team within Skywater so that both companies can start realizing revenue from product sales. And I believe that our relationship is very good and that the strength of our relationship will lead to much success for both companies. So who wants to work at Skywater? Come on, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's the kind of, I mean, that's literally just one example uh, of technology. And by the way, you know, it's going to go into the smartwatch. Uh, you know, the example was for um, medical bands that will be used, you know, when you're in the hospital. But I, I like the term, uh, you know, non-invasive, you know, <laughs> the ability to, you know, collect all this information and do it with electronics um, is pretty awesome. So in terms of just a little bit about uh, the fabs, we have uh, fab in Bloomington. Uh, that's our core right now. Uh, last year, we took over a fab in Kissimmee, Florida. And then of course, on the right, there's a fab that we hope to be building right next door here at Purdue. A couple things about this fab, it'll be 300 millimeter. So I believe the Burke uh, Center is six and 200 millimeter today, right? 200? Six. six, okay, so that's a big jump, so that's good. 
Yeah, good. Bigger is better in our benefit industry. <laughs> uh, the other is uh, it'll be doing both front-end fabrication and advanced packaging, so it'll have both those capabilities. The other is it will have innovation built into the facility, so capabilities that today you do at Burke uh, will now be inside this fab, uh, and then in the same facility we'll be running high volume manufacturing. So it's literally that, that combination of R&D and uh, high volume. And, and the reason you can do that is because we use things like artificial intelligence and robotics to manage this highly complicated manufacturing environment. Uh, it used to not even be feasible to do some of the complicated things that we do. Another exciting thing, 750 Skywater employees, maybe more, Amanda will make sure it's more. That's our HR, uh, our HR team's right here, by the way, if you want to talk more. Um, but it's 5,000 total jobs. So imagine this, in this region, say within five years, there's gonna be 5,000 jobs all tied to semiconductors. And where one comes, many follow. So uh, I think we have Tell in the audience. Uh, I'm sure Tell will want to have a presence here. Tell, Tokyo Electron, great equipment manufacturer. And that's the beauty of our, our industry is it's an ecosystem. So, um, you know, we, we refer to uh, this area now as the Silicon Heartline. You guys like that, Silicon Heartline? Um, Intel kind of stole it from us, but it started here, and, and we have proof. We have it on record. <laughs> but uh, there's actually a book coming out called The Silicon Heartland uh, next year, believe it or not. Everyone likes a great idea. <clears throat> but the point is that, uh, you know, it, in hindsight, it was almost an obvious choice, but with the amount of research that goes on here, the commitment to the semiconductor degrees program, SCALE, which is a program, so if you're interested in doing work for the DOD, uh, you can actually get a clearance, security clearance, while you're still in college. That allows you to work on um, the program, some of the programs we work on. I think we have over 100 people that have cleared, um, you know, clearances inside Skywater, so, um, you know, clearances are important. Be careful with your college life, because all that will come back uh, if you decide to go for a clearance. <laughs> so pay attention. Uh, but, but the idea of, of just tapping into what's been built here uh, in, uh, you know, West Lafayette uh, is just a huge opportunity and something that, um, you know, I couldn't be more proud to be part of. So in terms of, you know, the types of engineers we hire and, and build careers for, the first and foremost, and it, it makes me very happy to say it, is semiconductor degrees. Um, and, you know, up until Purdue announced it, there's no semiconductor degrees that you can get in the U.S. and even in the world. Uh, Rochester Institute of Technology has what they call a microelectronics degree, uh, but not nearly as cool as the one that is happening here. And I'm not biased at all, by the way. <clears throat> but <laughs> uh, I'm a Midwestern guy, not a New Yorker. But the, uh, but the reality, and a lot of these are terms that may mean something, but uh, we have engineering disciplines that start with design and go all the way through failure analysis and everything in between. And um, the great thing about our industry is you can do all these. I mean, you can literally come into uh, Skywater and be a device engineer and turn out as a test engineer and do everything in between. Um, and, you know, the, the value of having an engineering background, all semiconductor companies are run by people with semiconductor backgrounds. It's a reality, you know, that, uh, um, that you know, it, it kind of goes with, you know, kind of goes to the territory. It's a, it's a high tech space. So you tend to have engineers. So m like myself, I would have never thought I'd be running a company. Uh, but you know, in, in uh, our world, you start out as an engineer and then you come up with, you know, other ideas and you work through the bureaucracy. And the next thing you know, you get to make all the decisions. And then you own all the decisions, by the way. <laughs> that, we, we call that extreme ownership, by the way. <laughs> which means uh, you live with the outcome. Now in terms of uh, a typical day at Skywater, uh, it's all about, first and foremost, you know, if you're a manufacturing you know, uh, centric engineer, you're gonna be in the fab, you're gonna go into the fab, you're gonna basically 
you know, be in charge of either making a process better or making an entire flow better, or what we call a technology flow better. And it's all about, you know, understanding what's going on at the, um, at the process level. And it's, a, and it's a combination of understanding what's going on at the wafer, but then also what's happening around it in terms of, you know, the, uh, the chemistry that's being involved, the physics that's going on. If you look at what we call etching, uh, which is one of the most challenging parts of a chemical um, or a, a semiconductor process, it's plasma physics coupled with chemistry, coupled with, you know, how you design reactors. It's just all very complicated stuff. And so if you like, you know, data analytics, if you like working with your hands, if you like diagnosing problems, then semiconductors is the place to be. But I will say one thing, it's never dull, right? And if it is dull, then, you know, you're in the wrong job. <clears throat> because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something where, you know, in many ways, every day you come in, there's a new set of problems. So I, I've, you know, we have people that we work with that are accountants. There's nothing more boring, in my view, now, I'm sure that our CFO would disagree with me, but I mean, if you're an accountant, you're coming and you're looking at numbers, boring, boring, boring. But uh, if you want to, you know, use your brain, uh, think uh, engineering is where it's at. <laughs> I know that's terrible. I hope I, uh, this is being recorded, right? So I will live with this. Uh, that's great. Anyway, uh, as far as what employees look for, it's all about, you know, self-motivated, passionate, tenacity, not being, um, you know, not getting the deer in the headlights moments. Because uh, a lot of, you know, you're gonna have challenges every day. Um, and if you're not willing to get your hands dirty and solve problems, uh, then, it'll, then it'll be a challenge. But it's, um, you know, in terms of what we look for, I, the thing I look for the most, frankly, is passion. If, if you have passion and you like what you're doing, uh, then you can be successful. If you you know, and what's that old saying? If you love what you're doing, then it's not work, right? That's kind of how I look at semiconductors. Uh, you know, um, when I started my career, I never thought that I'd be standing in front of 300 people at Purdue talking about a semiconductor uh, degrees program, but I was passionate about it, I liked it, and you know, you just kind of make things happen. And never be satisfied, and own your own career, by the way. Don't, no, no one's gonna take care of your career, you have to take care of it yourself. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, grades do matter. <laughs> I forgot the left-hand side of that. But that's kind of what gets you in the door. So you got to get good grades because then you make it through the first filter. And then after that, it's all personality. So as far as careers, you know, again, they're all over. And I mean, uh, Mark said it, this is like the, the best place to be at your age coming into, you know, uh, a whole kind of re resurgence in semiconductors at a time where there's huge investment, there's going to be tons of new fabs going up. You know, when I was, call it, uh, early part of my career, I was watching all the fabs go overseas, and it's like, wow, what's going on? This is not good. Uh, whereas the exact opposite's going on here. So if you, uh, if you plan it right, do internships, you know, uh, we have internships that we run all the time. Uh, you, have to, you have to do internships, by the way. Because if you're not, then someone else next to you is, and he's going to get the job. Uh, but if, um, if you're you know, interested in getting you know, into applied science and you know, um, being able to evolve and get, you know, kind of um, get in an area that you can get excited about, uh, then there literally is no better place to be. And the, the other thing that's interesting about semiconductors is you can be in semiconductors and be dealing with biohealth, or you can be dealing with aeronautics, or be dealing with, frankly, anything, because everything requires a semiconductor. And so having you know, a combination of capabilities uh, to be able to, you know, like Mark Latecki, who runs our revenue team, you know, Applications engineers need to go in and speak the language of uh, bioscientists, uh, just like they need to, to know how to uh, deal with, you know, the aeronautical community and all that. So, you know, this semiconductor degrees program, even if say you get your BS in aeronautical engineering, you can get your master's in semiconductor engineering, 
What a great combination. I guarantee you Amanda will want to talk to you. Right, Amanda? <laughs> All right. We're almost done, by the way. So the last slide, and I'll start at the bottom. Where else can you routinely create the technology for the world you live in? It's semiconductors. And, you know, the, the industry, and this, this is my big worry, we're going to build fabs, we're going to do all this stuff, but if we can't hire the talent to put in our fabs, it's not going to work. And we need people to work on new tools, uh, creating the process technology of the future, new designers, all this has to come about quickly uh, so that we can take advantage of this moment in time to kind of recenter semiconductor manufacturing back in the U.S. So if, um, if you're interested in you know, a, a world where life is never boring, it's fast paced, and you know, as I say up here, it's not just a job, it's an adventure but it's a great adventure and it's one that, again, um, it, it may not seem like, you know, um, maybe at this point in you know, your life, you're like, what do I want to do? So take it from an older guy, this is what you want to do. <laughs> and if you do it and you're passionate about it, uh, you can build a great career. So that's the last slide. We can open it to questions. Any questions? Questions? No questions? Yes? What was like the path of you to an engineer and to now CEO of the whole company? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> our. Um, Can you repeat the question? Yeah, the question is how did I go from being an engineer to being a CEO of a company? You know, I actually had a slide on that and I took it out. So, see, <laughs> I should have listened to the uh, communication specialist. Um, but uh, so I started out at Monsanto as an intern. Literally when I was 18 years old, so uh, I, I got a scholarship and so I would go to school for a semester, then work for a semester. And uh, that was huge for me because I got to understand what was going on. But I became an engineer and, you know, um, by, you know, after several, you know, in kind of evol evolutions of being an engineer, I decided that I had a lot of ideas that no one wanted to listen to. <laughs> so I said, I better be a manager so I can uh, get some more influence. And so I became a manager and then just kind of kept going through. And you know, what happens is you can only do so much as an individual. So then you got to have more people on your team and then you got to inspire other people to, to follow your vision. And so, uh, um, and then, then there's multiple leaps of faith you have to take too. Uh, so, uh, you know, but you have to make the, the, the career, you know, your job. And if you do it right, the opportunities will come. And never be satisfied. That's another thing I can say. If you're bored in your job, then chances are you're gonna not like what you're doing and <clears throat> they'll find someone else to do it or you'll, you know, wanna do something else. So always be reinventing your career. Yeah. Um, what's the most important thing when you look for uh, passion and uh, the ability to um, to innovate. Uh, I mean, um, we're we're you know we're a small growing company, so you know we're we're not you know an established company. So you you've got to you know have kind of an entrepreneurial spirit, uh, but you got to have passion because uh, you know there's there's no easy day, so to speak. But uh, if you have the passion, you work your way through it. And then, uh, you know, you got to be, you know, and th th it goes without saying in this room, but you got to have the, the brains, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you guys are in the room, so I'm assuming that's taken care of. Any other questions? Yes? Um, will the Purdue fab have a lot of collaboration with Purdue students themselves, like undergraduates and masters and everything? Absolutely. In fact, my prediction, Mark will make this a reality, is that 25% of the people in the fab will be students from, that will be interning inside the fab. And, and I don't, you know, 25% may seem like, wow, that's a big number. Uh, but imagine, look how many people use the Burke Center today. And now we have a capability like the Burke Center inside the fab. And so that's where um, people, you know, will be working on projects for school, all that will be happening inside the fab. And uh, 
it's a, it's a force multiplier that's part of the reason why we want to build a fab here on campus because it taps into a resource base that you just can't get anywhere else, frankly. Any other questions? Hmm? Yes. We'll, we'll let you stand up too. So in uh, your presentation, you had uh, like a, an interesting slide about the engineering majors that you hope to hire. Right. And uh, I didn't see my major there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, which was it? <laughs> uh, so I'm an environmental engineer. Ah, okay. Yeah. I think uh, this is a great opportunity for us to work together to avoid waste because we, mm. we need transformative uh, technology. We usually forget about the aspects of end of life, recycling. Oh, great, great point. Yeah, environmental engineering, you know, there's a lot of engineering disciplines, and uh, that's certainly a very important one. And, uh, you know, we. We talk about clean energy too. This is all tied to environment. So, uh, good point. Yeah. So, we'll add that to the slide. <laughs> we have customers requiring a plan. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. We have customers that are re requiring uh, environmental uh, adherence policy, et cetera. Any other questions? Yes. Why the name Skywater? <laughs> oh, well, now you're making life really interesting. There's actually, it's very simple. So uh, Skywater actually means Minnesota in the native Indian language um, based on where we were formed, which is right along the Minnesota River, is that right? Um, so, yes. yeah. yeah, there we go, there we go. He, these guys know. Yeah, so it actually means um, Minnesota, I guess. But I think it's much cooler than that, so I, I don't like that version. <laughs> I like it. It's like something to do with uh, putting sky and water together. <clears throat> but it's, uh, it's a cool name, isn't it? Don't you agree? It's a cool name? Yeah. It's much better than, well, I won't say other names because we are being recorded. So, you know, and I know there's uh, friends and foes in the, in the audience. <clears throat> yes. Ah, wow, that's a great question. Uh, the most difficult thing is staying ahead of the game. So technology moves at such a fast pace that if you're not moving faster, <laughs> then you're going to be behind. And that is, uh, you know, I think the huge opportunity we have here in the U.S. because, I mean, we are a country of innovators and uh, the ability to let innovation turn into, I, I call it ideation to commercialization, uh, letting that accelerate um, is going to really, you know, be a driving force. But, you know, why did the U.S. go from, I mean, we invented this entire industry, right? And now we only make 12% of the semiconductors. Part of that is because we, we lost our way. We stopped paying attention to what's important. You know, even Intel, uh, big Intel, I know it's Intel in the audience, you know, for a period of time, they weren't reinvested in technology. I mean, Intel was always the one pacing Moore's Law. They created Moore's Law. And if you're not reinvesting, then you're going to get behind. And so you have to uh, remain focused on the core objective. And this is a technology-centric industry, so you've got to constantly be investing in technology. And by the way, invest in your people, too. Yes. So companies like AMD, Intel, MediaTek, et cetera, do a lot of like logic design. What do you think is the most exciting thing about manufacturing over the other aspects <laughs> of semiconductor? Yeah, well, again, um, manufacturing, you know, whether it's a nano sensor or a three nanometer processor, it's all about, <clears throat> you know, atomic level manufacturing. I mean, you, the, the reality is things that we make, you can't really see. I mean, we have very sophisticated pieces of equipment. Uh, so, you know, and I'll, and I'll just give you my personal antidote. I was at AMD competing against Intel. I didn't think there was anything in the world beyond a microprocessor. <laughs> I, I was kind of like, oh yeah, all those other technologies, that's boring, why, uh, it doesn't even matter until I stopped making microprocessors. So, 
you can you know be making an analog device on you know half micron uh, that's just as challenging in many ways as making an advanced of a microprocessor. It's just all a matter of the problems you're trying to solve. And that's where, again, that chart that I showed, all this investment goes into advanced node. There's all these other technologies that are starved for investment. That's why Burke is such a powerful force in innovation in our country, is because they're working on a lot of the other stuff. And the other stuff is really what's going to drive this next wave of computation I talked about. So it's, uh, it's really a matter of the types of problems you want to solve. I can tell you we have a lot of engineers who every day come into Skywater and have very challenging problems to solve. And it's not going from a three nanometer to an 18 angstrom processor. It's trying to, you know, make that Rockley device work, which is a photonics device, which is extremely complicated. Uh, and involves not just one chip, but like putting many chips together, and they all have to fit into a watch or the smart ring. You guys heard of the smart ring? I'll do my smart ring advertisement. <laughs> you gotta have a smart ring. <clears throat> Doesn't make you smarter, but it tells you all the problems you have. <laughs> um, but again, think of what's all electronics in this thing, right? Uh, and battery management systems, power, you know, Power devices, power MOSFETs are exploding right now. Uh, GAN technology is going to be huge, and none of this has to do with making 18 angstrom transistors. So it's all it's all relative. And by the way, digital has been the focus. You know, the digitization is what we've really been doing. Now it's all connecting the analog world to the digital world, and that's really what Skywater is all about. Yep, go ahead. How would you describe the work culture or atmosphere surrounding the semiconductor industry? Intense. Well, wow. it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very intense. It's very, um, you know, you got to be self-sufficient. Um, uh, but the, uh, the, the pace is very, you know, high frequency. There's, there's uh, you can't be, uh, you know, the, 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 put it this way, the train's moving at a high velocity. If you choose to get off it, then getting back on it, recognize you're gonna be down the road. And so uh, you have to, you know, there's a lot of people that burn out in our industry because it never stops, right? And so, uh, but as I said earlier, it's addictive too. So uh, the pace of innovation, the pace of change makes it very exciting. Like, what could be more boring than going and making bread or making, you know, <laughs> widgets or whatever you want to call it? I mean, I don't know. It just seems very boring to me. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we all have to have bread, of course. But, uh, you know, the idea of being in a fa fast-paced industry where change is a constant is uh, what Semiconductor is all about. So it's like I said with the accountants. It's, you know, some people like that. But if you like high intensity, never boring then high tech is, and it's not just semiconductors, it's high tech in general. So, yes? Uh, what expertise do you feel the semiconductor industry is lacking that students should be focusing on right now? Great question, and a lot of it is what you guys are doing, material science, chemical engineering, combined with data science and um, engineering analytics, right? Uh, so most problems, like back when I was going to school, we actually, you know, did everything by hand, believe it or not, and uh, now everything's on computer. And so being able to have, like, data science know-how coupled with engineering semiconductor know-how, that's a huge advantage because it allows you to solve problems quicker, take advantage. I mean, AI is going to become commonplace in semiconductor design. Google, the reason Google is doing what they're doing is because they want to use AI to design computer chips because they're pretty convinced you don't need humans to do anything. <laughs> and, uh, but, but think about it, because you have AI, now you can take a, a very complicated design, and with AI, you can accelerate how long it takes to get that design to market. And so um, having a combination of, um, you know, like when I was getting my degree, I took a lot of math and statistics. Um, I think I even have an advanced mathematics degree somewhere along the way that I don't even pay attention to. I probably should now because it would be very marketable, but back in the day it was like, math, who cares? <laughs> but uh, so combination of math 
uh, you know, computer science and engineering, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, engineering uh, discipline. Like, I'm biased towards chemical, well, electrical, but semiconductor engineering is perfect. Perfect combination. But make sure you pay attention to data science. Yes, there's one in the back there. So go ahead in the back. We'll start there. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good investor relations question there. Uh, but uh, I'll just give you broad terms. So uh, aerospace and defense is a big you know, area for us. That's about 30%. And then we do uh, automotive, industrial, IoT, um, med devices, and advanced computation. Those kind of make up the rest of the verticals. And I would say the rest are kind of equally distributed uh, amongst those other areas. Uh, we don't really give out the, the fine lines, and since it is being recorded. Uh, <laughs> but ab about 30% is all through DOD. And the DOD sees a lot of things, like the Google initiative um, that we mentioned was actually um, um, a spin out of a government funded initiative uh, that we did. So that's, that's part of our strategy, actually. Okay, question over here. That's even a better question. <laughs> so my, my uh, grandpa was a chemist. He worked for a company called Tums. You guys ever heard of Tums? You'll learn more about Tums as you get older. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he said, oh, be a chemist. And, and I went to look at how much money chemists make. And I said, I don't know. That's not. So I said, I'll be a chemical engineer. So that's it. <laughs> Nothing more scientific than that. Um, so, but it, it worked out well. Yes. Uh, what is your favorite part of working in the semiconductor industry or just in Skywater specifically? Uh, well, I love Skywater, you know, obviously. Uh, but the semiconductor, I mean, it's just how fast paced it is, and it's, it's never dull. And you get to meet extraordinary people doing extraordinary things, and you get to watch your ideas become reality in your lifetime. <laughs> and, and literally, you know, like the, uh, the, Rockley example, you know, three years ago, they came to us with an idea for, to develop a photonics device for the data center, and then three years later, we're making a photonics device for smartwatches and wearable bands, nothing to do with the original intent, and uh, it's just uh, constant change, and, and that's, again, why a lot of people in our industry are in it for the long haul, because once you get in it, like I said, anywhere else is boring. Yes? Oh, we, we, yeah, we, absolutely. We have, now we do uh, have, because we do stuff for the DOD, there's certain restrictions um, in terms of who we can hire and who we can't, but I'll let you talk to our HR department, uh, <laughs> who's right here, <laughs> uh, about that. And, and, and part of it is there's a, you know, as I said, uh, there's a, a lot of the work we do is uh, classified, and um, so as a result, you know, we, we, um, we have to be a, you know, it somewhat narrows who we can go after, uh, which is somewhat of a challenge. But um, if you're international and, you know, um, depending upon the work that we're doing, it's certainly an option. Yep. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, I think uh, I will just say that as somebody that does chip design for AI and IoT for my day job, you know, it was, a lot of this was music in my ears. Uh, the second thing I will add uh, is, you know, you, you mentioned the Google uh, Open PDK and, uh, uh, you know, and the relationship with uh, eFabless and Skywater. Um, I wanted to share that in our new semiconductor degrees program, when we have it up and running, any student that chooses to specialize in chip design will have an opportunity to design a chip, go through eFabless and have, a, have silicon brought up through your process, right? And so uh, we're very excited about that, uh, that developing initiative. Right? And we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll switch gears a little bit. And 
I don't want to take too much time here, but I, what I w did want to do was quickly flip through uh, you know, the list of companies, the list of 27 so semiconductor companies. We don't have slides from all of them, but uh, at least a good subset of them. Um, and I won't really be describing everything that's on the slide, but this is really to give you just a quick glimpse of the company names and a quick snapshot of the information that they have there in terms of what they do, so that in the networking reception that we have immediately following this, you'll have an opportunity to sort of go talk to them, right? So watch out for things that look interesting to you on a slide and uh, you know, note the company name, and you can go talk to their uh, reps right after this, right? And so we'll, and this will also give you a good idea of the breadth of opportunities uh, in terms of the wide spectrum of employers and the wide spectrum of activities that the semiconductor ecosystem comprises of. Uh, Air Liquid is a, uh, you know, a company that uh, you know, specializes in carrier gas production as well as uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know, chemicals as well as equipment to apply those chemicals in the semiconducting, uh, semiconductor industry. Um, so they're here today, we're you know, very happy to have them here. Um, and they're looking for uh, you know, both uh, you know, intern positions as well as uh, new college graduates, right? So if uh, uh, you know, that's uh, some of the things that you see here on the slide look interesting for you, uh, you know, make sure that you do, that you do talk to them. Um, Amazon and Amazon Web Services, right? Uh, many of you perhaps thought that Amazon was a software-only company, which is not true. So Amazon and uh, AWS, uh, you know, they're, they're here. Um, and as you see here on the top left of the slide, they have a broad spectrum of semiconductor activities. Uh, they do chip design, verification, right? AI, ML, security, uh, sort of focused chip design. So very happy to have them here. So please make sure that if you're, th that's the domain that you're, interested, that you're interested in, please make sure you go talk to them. Um, <clears throat> applied materials, right? It's almost going the other end of the spectrum. Uh, you know, they're the leader in materials engineering solutions, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, equipment. Uh, and you can see on the bottom right uh, the majors that they hire from, right? So, and you can pretty much see a lot of these, uh, and, you know, uh, hopefully uh, environmental engineering will be on there too. Uh, so that's applied materials for you. Uh, you know, Draper uh, is another interesting one. Uh, you know, they're an independent nonprofit. Um, and uh, you know, their uh, mission is really to support and defend democracy around the world by solving the most challenging and uh, important technology problems. Um, and as you can see from some of the things that they do, it's really, uh, again, a, a pretty broad spectrum from data analytics and machine learning all the way to uh, you know, guidance, navigation, and control systems. So uh, and they're, again, hiring for all positions, internships, uh, you know, full-time jobs at, from, you know, from bachelor's, master's, as well as PhD. Uh, global foundries. Uh, <coughs> Yes, Tom, you have to talk about some of these, some, some of friends and foes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Global Foundries uh, is also, uh, you know, a, a fab, uh, and they provide process technology solutions, uh, 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 hire in, uh, you know, across a range of uh, engineering disciplines, and they are hiring both interns, new college graduates, experienced professionals, right, so, uh, you know, for a number of their sites, um, both their fabs as well as their offices in uh, Austin and Santa Clara. Hemlock Semiconductors, um, another uh, sort of you know very interesting company, uh, leading producer of high purity polysilicon products for uh, electronics as well as solar power industries, um, and again, pretty broad swath of jobs, uh, you know, from manufacturing to reliability and uh, you know quality control, material scientists. Uh, they're seeking uh, summer interns for uh, 2023 at the IR and have several other open positions listed on their uh, on their website. Um, Infineon. Uh, is uh, you know pretty broad. They do design, you know, fab equipment, materials, etc., um, and uh, also hiring both internships, sort of new graduates, as well as uh, you know re something pretty interesting, uh, which is a regional uh, a graduate program, which is a rotational program in the United States. So if that sounds interesting. Uh, make sure they have about 30, 40 uh, you know graduate and 50 intern positions that they have available. Um, Intel. Uh, You've all heard of uh, heard of Intel, of course, um, and uh, anything from AI to software to fab to design. Uh, I think Intel has uh, positions available. Uh, you know, undergraduate or graduate, you really apply for jobs at uh, at their website, and they do plan to be here on October nineteenth for on campus interviews. Uh, Marvel Semiconductor is a fabless 
semiconductor supplier, so they basically do design. Um, and uh, so they are looking for people that can do ASIC design, SOC design, FPGA based design engineers, software firmware engineers, uh, you know, analog circuit designers, post silicon, pre and post silicon validation engineers and stuff. Um, again, pretty broad, uh, broad and large program that they have, uh, about 100 plus interns during 2023. And you know, those of you who are looking for internships, let's make sure we fill up, you know, not just for Marvel, but you know, all these other companies, as many as possible with Boilermakers. Uh, <clears throat> Micron is here, um, Micron again, uh, does goes everything from you know design to fab uh, you know equipment materials you know, primarily focused on uh, memory uh, uh, and uh, you know have lots of positions open for internships co-op uh, you know gear full-time jobs uh, both at undergraduate as well as uh, as well as a PhD uh, they have flexible start dates with uh, you know flexible periods for uh, internships and co-op kind of positions and a broad uh, you know set of possibilities in terms of location. Uh, reliable Microsystems is uh, a uh, systems design company. They support semiconductor infrastructure needs through system level, circuit level, as well as technology level design. Um, and they have 10 open positions uh, for uh, anywhere from engineering interns to junior st staff engineers to all the way to through senior project managers. Um, and uh, uh, you know, they're uh, small but growing quite fast. Seagate. Um, have locations worldwide. Uh, you know, if uh, you know, any of you have uh, had storage solutions, you, you quite likely have used a Seagate uh, storage solution. Uh, you know, before um, have locations uh, in the U.S. as well as uh, internationally, and uh, they're hiring uh, uh, you know, internships as well as entry-level full-time jobs in w worldwide locations. Jobs.seagate.com is where you really want uh, to visit to um, you know apply for some of those. We've heard uh, you know, a lot about Skywater. You know exactly where the Skywater team is, uh, is positioned, so uh, feel free to come uh, hit them up for opportunities. Uh, there you go. <laughs> the slide was updated, at least here. Uh, Synopsis um, has the motto of powering the new era of smart everything from silicon to software. So a Synopsis makes uh, you know, design software that helps design chips as well as a whole bunch of other uh, you know interesting intellectual property uh, solutions that they have. They have a very broad IP portfolio uh, that helps people put chips together. Uh, and uh, again, Synopsys has uh, you know quite a deep and growing relationship with Purdue and lots of opportunities um, at you know for internships as well as new college grad opportunities. Right? And we're very glad that uh, Synopsys is here today. Uh, TSMC, another uh, fab, uh, uh, you know, powerhouse, uh, and uh, you know, there, you've uh, many of you who've heard the big announcements of TSMC, uh, you know, uh, bringing back some manufacturing capacity to the U.S. with their new site in Arizona, uh, and uh, they have a lot of opportunities. They're hiring new college graduates with. Uh, Sort of many roles uh, available at their new Arizona facility, and they have a new intern program that they're going to be announcing for their TSMC Arizona site. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you know, pleasure to welcome them to campus. Uh, TI, um, you know, many of you are familiar with TI, you know, with uh, your your calculators, but uh, they do uh, you know quite a broad spectrum of activity from design to fabrication and assembly. Uh, sort of all company owned. Uh, you know they you know, fabricate their own chips. Uh, lots of locations and lots of different types of jobs in engineering, uh, as well as other disciplines such as manufacturing, finance, you know, packaging, quality, and all that. Uh, hiring lots of positions, and I, you know, had to do a double take when I looked at that and said they have 3,000 positions that they have available that they're hiring for. So I think that just goes uh, to uh, underscore one of the points that Tom uh, was mentioning, that there's an acute need for talent in the space, right? So all of these companies are looking to uh, you know, hire the, the best and the brightest, and that's all of you in the room. Uh, Tokyo Electron um, is a uh, leading global company of semiconductor uh, and flat panel display production equipment. Right? Tom referred to them as well, and we're, we're glad to have them here. Um, and again, hiring PS, MS, PhD, so regardless of whether you're an undergrad student or graduate student, uh, lots of intern co-op as well as uh, you know, full-time positions available with them. <coughs> uh, and finally, 
uh, I wanted to end with uh, something which is in-house, which is the SCALE program, right? Uh, for those of you that have not heard, the SCALE program is a DOD uh, supported and DOD funded uh, workforce development initiative. Uh, it provides students with opportunities in defense microelectronics. It's really a consortium of a uh, large number of universities, federal employers, and defense industry companies. Um, so if you're here um, on campus and would like to get involved with, uh, with SCALE, uh, the person you should be talking to is Professor Peter Burmel, who is the PI, who's right, who's right here. You see his hand going up. Uh, feel free to talk to Peter about opportunities for getting involved in research uh, you know, across a very pretty wide uh, you know, spectrum of disciplines and types of positions um, uh, you know, in research, whether you're an undergraduate student or a graduate student. Uh, and for some of our industrial partners, if you'd like to be uh, you know, part of the SCALE Consortium, you know, please do see Peter. Um, I think uh, you know, he would welcome your participation as well uh, you know, in terms of growing the SCALE ecosystem. Um, I think I'll stop with this, and you will get a lot of opportunity to network with many of with everybody that's here and more, right? Including several that are not, uh, you know, were not on my set of slides. But before we do that, I do want to turn it over to uh, you know my colleague uh, Professor Mohammad Hussain to talk about something an, an exciting new initiative that we have as part of the semiconductor degrees program, uh, which is a new course on uh, introduction to semiconductors. All yours. Yes. <coughs> Hi everyone, uh, you can hear me, right? Okay, so I'm Mohammed Hussein. I'm one of the newest professors in uh, Purdue campus, but I am one of the oldest people in the uh, fab. Uh, I spent 10,000 hours in three years during my PhD inside the fab, so I exactly am a fab rat. But I can tell you that you are going to enjoy every single second. I do recognize that physically it's exhausting, but mentally, it's always stimulating. So that is the part of like you know checks and balancing. So now you have been shown about the dreams of what's really happening. So I'm going to actually give you the first gateway that how you can enter into these like you know the how you can realize your dreams and you associate your dreams. So we are going to introduce a new course. Uh, which is the introduction to semiconductors. This is a one create our course that we have designed in conjunction, in consultation with our semiconductor industry partners from Apple, Intel, Micron, uh, Applied Materials. So what we are going to do, this is going to be an interactive session. They are going to have a dozen plus semiconductor industries and their representatives. They are going to basically discuss on different topics which includes from logic microprocessors to designing the semiconductor electronics to sustainable semiconductor manufacturing process. We didn't forget the environmental engineering part. My wife is an environmental engineer. And, <laughs> the, and those of you who are really fascinated about the drones, the, you know, the automobile industry, the Tesla, and they, all the EVs, there will be many more chips inside all these automobiles, and obviously the digital healthcare. So I don't know when we are going to call it the fifth or sixth revolution, but your healthcare technology is going to be having tons of chips, okay? So this is the course, and this is going to be on Wednesdays from next semester, so which is 2023, uh, spring semester, 4.30 p.m. It's going to be in our uh, engineering, uh, the Dean's uh, building, uh, so uh, College of Engineering building there, ARMS 1010. So I would like to actually encourage you all so that you go and you register for this course. You are not going to lose your points or anything like that. This is a really the relaxed state of things, not only the pizzas and so on and so forth. I will try to actually make sure that you have also like you know, all the healthy options and unhealthy options, uh, like beyond pizzas. Okay, so our next part is, let's say that you have completed that. So what do you do next, right? So we would like to prepare you so that you become an asset as someone who the semiconductor industries are looking for. So we would like to actually give you the opportunity for this summer program, which we are calling the Summer Training on Awareness and Readiness for Semiconductors, the STARS. And the STAR is you. So the way that it will work, it's a 10 weeks long semiconductor skill development program. It will have two tracks. One track is on semiconductor manufacturing. In that track, you will be interacting a lot with me uh, or my colleagues who basically work in this area. 
And if you choose the other track, which is the chip design, then you will be working with my good friend uh, VJ and his cohort. Okay. So uh, for the semiconductor manufacturing, there are four things that we will be focusing on. So each of these modules, they are going to actually keep you engaged for two weeks. So yeah, you can say 80 hours in two weeks. Uh, so basically, that's going to be the IC fabrication, packaging, uh, material, and device characterization. Uh, so we are going to have, in the beginning, the first one in uh, summer 2023, 50 rising sophomores who have completed introduction to semiconductors. So that course, the course that I just talked about. And the idea is to empower you for the internships in semiconductor industries after sophomore year. So we would like to bring you and to give you the exposure early on. Uh, and the learning components, we are going to have at least like you know, the four different learning components so that basically that gives you the opportunities to get engaged because you might not the one way of learning. So there is going to be the online tutorial. There are going to be the virtual fab based training. So you basically as if you are inside a clean room and you can be trained on there. There will be video tutorial and then finally the hands on training when I was a bit young. Uh, at that point. Uh, so uh, so that, those are the four components that you will be exposed to during your, this, uh, the process of. This is going to be a paid uh, opportunity, means that you will also get payment, okay? So this is not something that unpaid, you just go and like in the work there. So I welcome you all uh, to both of these opportunities and then there will be many more to talk about in context of uh, the semiconductor certification, uh, specialization, online degree program, and obviously our the traditional uh, masters and uh, bachelors and concentration programs and so forth. Okay, so uh, we are all here. Uh, like you know, the we we can talk more as we go outside, but these are the two takeaway uh, message for you. Okay, so go please register for that introduction to semiconductors course. And then when you are done with that, like you know, the <coughs> don't forget for the starts program. Okay? Thank you so much.